Kyle Larson makes a shock return to Chili Bowl, and maybe Auto Club Speedway isn't dead yet. All right, we're gonna start with the biggest news of the week, and that is Kyle Larson returning to Tulsa to race at the Chili Bowl this season. He'll be there on Thursday night as he attempts to qualify for Saturday night's feature race. He'll be driving the number 98 K car for Keith Coons Motorsports, a team that he has previously raced for as well, and he'll have sponsorship from HendrickCars.com, of course. It will be interesting to see if that Toyota branding that all of the KKM cars is on Larson's car or if it is not. It was when he was with Ganassi. That branding was on the car. Will be interesting now that he is with Hendrick. He's not racing his own car. Instead, according to Flow Sports, Flow Racing, Larson called Keith Coons on Tuesday morning to congratulate him on Monday night's win with Tanner Carrick. And, you know, they got to talking and like Tony Stewart walking through the Indy 500 garage area in the early 2000s, Kyle Larson was like, hey, you got a car laying around? And Keith Coons like, you know what? We actually do. So now Larson has dropped his name in the hat. He'll be there on Thursday as he attempts to qualify for Saturday night's feature race. Right now, he is also racing in the Wild West shootout down in New Mexico. He'll race there on Saturday and then fly to Tulsa Saturday night to race in Chili Bowl. It is going to be a hectic travel schedule for him, assuming that he does lock himself into the future race on Saturday night, or on Thursday night rather, for Saturday night. He has to finish in one of the top two spots on Thursday, so we'll see what happens there. But Kyle Larson walking back into the Tulsa Expo Center on Thursday is going to be a bit like Russ from Independence Day when he flies back into the alien spaceship and going, hello boys, I'm back. Yeah, there's a lot of people right now in Tulsa that weren't super psyched to see Larson's name pop back up on that entry list. Larson, of course, did famously say that he wasn't going to attend the Chili Bowl because he didn't think that the purse lived up to the size of the race and how much money people are putting into winning this race. Previously to this year, the winner's purse only paid $10,000. And you could get add-ons if you led a certain number, of, or if you led laps and whatnot. But that's still just not enough, considering you're spending a bit of money to go down there for a week in Tulsa. And granted, you don't have to go down for the entire week. We understand that. But this year, the purse has been raised to $20,000. And the Hans, the organizers of the event, said that has nothing to do with Kyle Larson, which sure it doesn't. We'll go ahead and believe, believe you on that one. But it is good that the race is getting the purse that it deserves. And $20,000 still just isn't enough for how much money this event more than likely brings in. I did a breakdown on it before. And somebody's pocketing some money around here. But for Larson to come back, that's a huge get. And I think that Flow Racing probably had a lot to do with this, right? Larson does have a really close relationship with Flow Racing. They sponsor his cars. His High Limit National Tour will now also be on Flow Racing starting in 2024 as he took over the All-Star Sprint uh, Series as well as High Limit merged him into one. Both of those were already on Flow, but now they have a marquee series to go head-to-head -head with the World of Outlaws and a lot of drivers that have now joined High Limit and an effort to try to build that platform up. So I think Flo maybe had something to do with Larson getting into this ride. I could be completely off base. Maybe Larson just watched on Monday night and saw that that race was nearly a certified banger and was like, I want to get down there and race in Tulsa, which maybe he did because the racing on Monday night was great. Track prep was great. The anti-cheating and making everybody hand over their receivers for a track issued one no watches take your helmet off let us check everything that was a bit bizarre but whatever we'll get into that in a little bit on a different video but for kyle larson he is returning to the chili bowl he of course won the race in 2020 and 2021 he's now going for his third golden driller we'll see if he can get it done it's a big get. It's going to put butts in seats. It's going to have a ton of people tuning in on Thursday, and it brought a new level of excitement back to the event, right? In an event that has three former winners of it, both or Kyle Larson, Chris Rebell, and Rico uh, Abreu, not being there is, you know, it, it took a hit. It's, the event took a hit. If we're being completely honest, you want to have the best guys there. I'm not out here saying that Logan Seavey and Tanner Thorson and Spencer Basin and everybody else, Justin Grant, team as that they're not great. But I think even they would be like, well, we want to have the best of the best out here. And if you don't have those three guys there, it's like, well, they do account for uh, six golden drillers over the last 10 years. Like, you maybe want them there. And now you're getting one of them back and arguably the most talented American driver at the moment. We'll see, you know, how that all pans out, especially with Indianapolis coming up in May. But to get Kyle Larson back, 
that's huge. And now we'll see what he can do on Thursday if he can lock himself into Saturday night's feature. Again, has to finish in the top two spots to lock himself in. If not, he has to start working his way through the alphabet soup on Saturday. Uh, best case scenario, if he doesn't lock in on Thursday night, finishing in one of those top two spots was to be high up in the B main and not have to do too much work uh, when Saturday rolls around. But like I said, tune into Flow Racing. It's the only way to watch Chili Bowl this year. It will not be on Map TV for the feature on Saturday night like it has been in years in the past because Lucas Oil exited. They also own Map TV, so that makes sense. $150 a year, you get Chili Bowl, of course, this whole week of racing, Wild West Shootout, this whole week for racing. You also get the entire Cars Tour throughout the season. You're getting the High Limit National Tour as well. Tons of weekly racing. You also get USAC on there and a bunch of other just series that you're like, I would tune in to watch this or just tracks across the country. If you want to watch Chaos at Bowman Gray, it's on there every Friday night or Saturday night, whenever they run uh, throughout the summer. Tune in. So that's the big news with Kyle Larson and this week. Another big story that I saw, and I, I'm, a, I'm a doubter when it comes to the future of Auto Club Speedway, Fontana, California Speedway, Next Gen California, whatever name you want to call it, I'm a doubter that that short track is actually going to happen. The property value is just too high. And I said from the beginning that I wouldn't be shocked to see them tear down all of the grandstands, tear up the garage area, and then NASCAR just sell off that last 90 acres that they had and just pocket the money because it makes sense. It's worth a ton of money. But new, vote, new photos coming out of Fontana show that this project might still be alive. So basically what we see right here is the track. And they've torn up all of turns one and two down the backstretch. Asphalt's been removed. The banking's still there from the dirt. It's really unfortunate to see the Daytona 24 course from Ford versus Ferrari get torn up like this. Matt Damon doesn't deserve it. But nevertheless, it's gone. And instead, they stopped exactly where the drawings said that they were going to. Leaving the front stretch grandstands intact, basically like the, the drawings laid it out to be, and they did not tear up pit road or the front stretch, which is supposed to somehow connect. I'm still not sure how they're going to do that, and I don't think NASCAR is either, because according to their iRacing simulations, that corner would be really wonky. But regardless, the garage area, pit road, the suites behind pit road and the front stretch grandstand are all still intact, exactly like NASCAR wanted. So the infrastructure is still there. I still have a little bit of hope. And I laid the, the plans over top of what the satellite image is here. So you have this Cherry Avenue over here on the side, and then you can see the entire track laid out over top of it. And that half mile track is substantially smaller than what the two mile D-shaped oval is now. But you can see just how much space is being taken up by those warehouses now. Basically where NASCAR turn one and turn two at, is at, or was at rather, is now going to be a massive warehouse complex. So that part's happening. But the fact that this area is still being preserved does give me some hope that we're going to maybe eventually see this. Of course, plans for this were, well, leaked in 2020, in September of 2020. And then this whole thing was supposed to be done in time for the 2022 season. So 2021 was supposed to be the last time that they raced at the Two Mile Fontana. Obviously, that didn't happen because of the pandemic and everything that went along with that. And then the rising cost of construction also limited how much work they could do if they were ever going to do it. And then Steve O'Donnell at The Clash was like, you know, we continue to weigh all of our options and evaluate everything, which had everybody, myself included, being like, this is never going to happen. We've all heard this before. It's like your parents taking you to the store and being like, well, we'll think about it. Well, yeah, so that means no, we're not getting it right now. And for obvious logical reasons. And I get it, right? You don't want to overspend on your construction materials. And now the fact that interest rates have come down and the price of goods has started to come down, at least on building materials, maybe NASCAR can explore it now. And they have a bunch of cash in their pocket, thanks to the sale of this, to Ross Perot's son, of all people, uh, former presidential candidate Ross Perot. They can now potentially look at building this out. And I still don't necessarily know how they're going to turn this into what they described as a Martinsville-Bristol hybrid, right? Long straightaways like Martinsville, but bank corners like Bristol. I love the idea. I think it sounds great. I just don't know how they're going to do it with this current setup that they have right here. 
Garage is also being on the outside of the track on the back stretch. It does have like an old school feel to it, which is pretty cool. Hopefully they put a tunnel in or else it's going to be awkward to try to get in and out. And well, we don't have practice anymore, so I guess it doesn't matter. But for qualifying, I guess everybody's just stuck in the infield. That'd be bizarre. Uh, or they just do like they do at the Coliseum. Yeah, they'll just run like six at a time. All right, well, I just got sidetracked. My brain just continues to fire. I think it's cool though. I'm glad that they haven't torn up the entire track yet. If anybody in Fontana that's working on the construction site happens to watch this and you can maybe potentially get me a piece of, I don't know, the wall or the asphalt at Fontana, let me know. Follow me on Instagram or Twitter or look at my TikTok bio for my email that's in there. I'll just actually put it up here at the bottom and you know, let me know. I'll pay to have it shipped to me. I think it would just be cool to own a piece of that. That's me asking for something, which I never do. So leave me alone in the comments. But I'm glad that this track isn't all the way gone yet, right? It's a bummer that the two mile oval is gone. It put on great racing. I understand why it's gone because the property value is very high, which is kind of hilarious to me because 30 years ago when they wanted to build this racetrack, this was a complete hazmat site, right? It was an old industrial um, facility. They had to dig out some of the dirt. It wasn't suitable for anything other than building a racetrack on, essentially. And now, all of a sudden, it's great to build industrial, well, not industrial, but rather warehouses and storage and uh, places like that. So, yeah, property value certainly will change uh, how things are zoned and rated. But for Roger Penske, he built the racetrack, and now, unfortunately, that two-mile oval is gone. But the half mile is still alive. And that makes me somewhat happy. NASCAR can't afford to leave the second biggest media market in the country in Los Angeles, right? They have the Clash, which is great, but I don't think the Clash is going to be back in 2025, or at least not in the Coliseum. The Clash will still exist, just not there. And I think they need a presence there. And granted, Fontana is 45 minutes outside of Los Angeles, but it's still in a market with 20 million people. So you have to at least consider making this work. And there's really no other options for them unless they're going to run a street race. And, you know, IndyCar kind of already has that market cornered with the Long Beach Grand Prix. Regardless, excited to see this happen still. So let me know in the comments. Are you excited to see Kyle Larson back at Chili Bowl? What do you think about Fontana? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.